Starter ships in Star Citizen are the bread and butter of the new player journey, usually offering the entry-level ships for pilots first getting access to the game, and the newly released Drake Cutter sets its sights on giving something fresh and new to the starter ship genre. But of course, many of you will want to know, when you set aside all of the marketing blurb, how does it actually perform in the game? I'm Farrister, and in this video we'll explore the answer to that question by reviewing the currently flyable Drake Cutter, which is described as a starter and light freight ship. If you've seen other reviews on this channel then you probably know what to expect, with this video following the usual format. It's split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. As always, I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the many people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you might consider it so you can be notified of future Star Citizen videos as they go live. Starting with a brief tour of the cutter, we'll press one of the open ramp buttons on the port and starboard side of the cutter. This deploys the rear ramp which takes up into the rear cargo bay. Upon entry to the ship there's another button to be able to close the ramp. You can also see a window on either side with a yellow tint to it. This is the large rear cargo bay of the cutter. You can alternatively have 4 SCU of cargo storage, put a vehicle in here or box delivery boxes. There's also access to some of the components of the ship which may be useful in the future. Moving further forward, we'll enter into this door at the front of the compartment which takes us into habitation. There's a bed for player usage, as well as access to the ship inventory. On the port side there's also another door hidden on the left. This takes you into the Drake style shower toilet combination. At least there's not a see through window in this one. Moving to the front of the ship, we see some more access on the left, and then a door that opens up into the cockpit section. There's some more toggle buttons for various components, and on the starboard side a weapons locker. And then the deployable pilot's chair which takes you to the front of the ship. After spinning around you get access to the cockpit, and it's worth adding there's also a button which deploys armour skirts to the side of the windshield. The cutter comes armed with two size 2 mounts, although by default they're equipped with gimbaled size 1 bulldog repeaters. Further, the cutter carries four size 1 missiles, with the option to swap them out for two size 2 missiles should you wish to purchase the bigger mounts in game. Defensively, the cutter carries a single size 1 shield generator, which makes it rather vulnerable, especially in comparison to the Aurora or Avenger series all of which carry two generators. That said, for entry level combat the cutter does ok. It's not as dangerous as the bespoke fighters, or even the combat offerings of other starter ship variants, but as a platform to be able to perform basic combat missions, the cutter is quite capable. Pilot visibility in the cutter is reasonable. There are a couple of cockpit struts, but generally the pilot view is good out to the front and sides. Above and below is a little more restricted. There is a toggleable armour shroud for the side of the windshield which reduces visibility when deployed. The cutter is noticeably slower than the Avenger, both in terms of top speed and handling. The top speed on the cutter is 1050 meters per second, with an SCM default at 160 meters per second. The ship feels a little slower when compared to the sleek profile of the Avenger 2. That said, the cutter does have VTOL capability, with the proprietary Drake rotating engines. That can help a pilot to avoid mistakes when flying low to the ground, 
albeit it's a more advanced feature that some new pilots may not be aware of. It's also worth adding that the cutter lands heavily. It's hard to describe, but essentially when you're coming in to land, it always feels like there's a lot of downwards pressure on the ship, even when you're taking it easy on the throttle. The stock quantum drive is awful, and desperately in need of an early upgrade. However, the quantum fuel stores are incredibly generous, meaning that the cutter can make it around the Stanton system many times before needing to refuel, which may be especially useful in larger star systems in the future. As a starter ship, the cutter is incredibly cheap to operate. Expect repair and refuel costs in the hundreds of Alpha UEC. And the cutter also offers plenty of options for earning cash. Low end combat contracts are feasible, as are box delivery missions. There are 4 SCU of cargo storage set aside at the back, making trading theoretically possible, albeit with extremely limited profit margins. And there's even space in the back bay for ground vehicles, including a Grey Cat Rock mining rover, if you're happy to leave the rear ramp open whilst you're flying around. In terms of loadout changes, I'd upgrade the Quantum Drive to a military spec drive like the VK00, and probably upgrade the shield generator to an FR66. Then change the weapons based on your personal preference. For my preference, I'd swap the gimbals out for fixed M4A laser cannons. The Cutter is a starter ship, a jack of all trades, master of none. It's a platform to let players experience different elements of the game before specialising later on, probably with in-game currency. And there's a lot that's good about the Cutter in that regard. The one minute claim timer means players won't be sat around for too long waiting for their ship if things go wrong. The inclusion of the living quarters with a bed, shower and ship inventory means that the Cutter can be a home away from home. And that's especially true with the big quantum fuel tank. The space at the back for cargo, or boxes, or small vehicles is really valuable for a starter ship, making the cutter a much more versatile platform than some of the others. And the rotating VTOL engines help ease the player into the Drake ecosystem ahead of larger ships like the Cutlass as potential future steps. For some pilots, the rough and ready Drake style will be a cool visual feature, for others, less so. And from a combat perspective, the relatively weak single shield generator might be a bit of a turnoff, as is the long walk from the back to the front of the ship, having to traverse three different doors. But the cutter does manage to capture something in the personality of the ship, and that's really important for starter ships especially. It's chunky and functional, with no time or expense wasted on making the ship beautiful. It's a fantastic platform into many of the different gameplay loops, letting new players experience combat, trading, cargo delivery, or even mining rovers, and that's quite rare at this price point. The price point is $40 for the standalone ship, and a little more when coupled with a game package. And at that price, the Cutter is a really compelling alternative to other starter ships, including the Avenger Titan, which is more expensive. There's no in-game price for the ship yet, although as a starter ship, the Cutter probably isn't one that many players would pick up if they have bigger ships available. Although that might not always be the case, be sure to share your thoughts in the comments. So, I suppose the verdict for the Cutter is that it's a really compelling option for a new player ship. For specific game loops like combat, there may be better choices, but as a balanced platform to experience much of what Star Citizen has on offer, the Cutter could be a good value for money choice. But what do you think of the Cutter? I look forward to reading your thoughts in the video comments. As always, if you're not yet subscribed, you might consider it if you've got this far, to give YouTube the nudge to suggest similar videos to you in the future. And it would also be really helpful to me if you would press that like or dislike button, to guide me as to what videos you're enjoying the most, so I can focus on making the most relevant videos in the future. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.